there is a mapping of all IP addresses with the numbers. Sorry, IP addresses with the domain. Okay, so uh, this is there in your system only. Okay, it's stored in inside your computer. Stored in your computer. Now the problem is, the problem is what? So uh, earlier days you maybe visit like uh, 50 websites maybe on a day. But now the thing is, you have tabs and tabs and tabs on Google Chrome or Firefox. You uh, visit almost like uh, maybe 100 to 200 or maybe 500 websites per day. So if you do this, if you do some calculation here, one day like it's 500, then weekly if you calculate, monthly if you calculate, if you calculate it for years, then this file, this host.txt file is going to be very larger. It could be very larger in, in future. In size, all right. So if it like gigs and uh, terabytes, then it is not a good idea to you know, uh, I mean, implement a host.txt file here. So this is not a good idea for me to uh, you know have this host.txt file. I hope uh, you understand it, right? And there might be a chance that uh, these IP addresses here they are completely fixed in the host.txt. So if somehow this Google.com change the web server, this change is not going to be happen. Okay, so it is not going to be happen here. And then uh, if you open google.com, the page is not going to reflect. It will say the page cannot connect because in the host.txt file, it is connected to the previous IP address, but your google.com now sits to the other web server having a different IP address. So he cannot be, uh, he is not here in the mapping. So definitely you will, you cannot open a google.com here, right? So that is another disadvantage. Uh, so these are, uh, web server migrates uh, that will create a problem right so these are the two disadvantages of host.txt now because all these things we are here and that's why we have we have we have improvised a new mechanism and we call it as dns you see dns is a domain name system and uh, why i'm calling this uh, dns domain name system is uh, uh, is another thing is why is a domain name server you see if you are having a single server all right if you are having one single server so a dns server uh, dns if there is a single server then i say domain name server but now if you are having multiple uh, you know dns servers here uh, then i will say this is not a server this is a system because you are this system comprises of different servers, so that's why we have a domain name system. By the way, the DNS servers are nothing, but they are also having the mapping criteria just like host.txt. So what, is, what exactly is their server? Inside a server, you see that if I have this DNS server, it is nothing, it is nothing but a similar to that of host.txt. So what happens in this DNS server, you see that they have something called as lookup tables, right? They have lookup tables very similar to that of this. You see this mapping, okay, lookup table mapping. There's a mapping, so uh, something like this, IP address to domain name and domain name to IP address like that. So uh, whenever a request comes up in the DNS server, it will find the lookup table, uh, there is a mapping and relevant, uh, uh, your request is going to be uh, move or forward to the relevant IP address, which is there in the lookup table. That's, that is a normal thing that is uh, there in the DNS server, right? Now, uh, the question is, uh, you see that uh, uh, I have a specific IP address for a web server to handle this domain name. Then uh, if I have a unique IP address, then it must be necessary that you have some unique domain name. It is a very important thing. So here, uh, you have a unique IP address. Here, you have unique IP. Then domain should also be unique important also be unique so how how can you make this unique with the help of uh, you know organization so uh, this namespace or this domain name uh, we have organized into two ways the first way is known as a flat namespace okay so this domain name the naming criteria here it is going to be is going to be organized into two uh, first one is a flat namespace and the another one is a 
hierarchical uh, namespace. Okay, so these are two namespaces, and I'll tell you what exactly these flat namespace and the hierarchical namespace. You see, when I when I deal with uh, flat namespace, what it looks like, flat namespace here, it looks uh, it is having uh, like it is having a characters. So it has a sequence of character first of all. Sequence of characters, but the problem here is they are unstructured. They not have any structure. So when I say they do not have any structure, what it looks like? It looks like uh, let's say there is A B C uh, namespace. Then uh, this namespace is going to be further divided into like this. So this could be like, uh, maybe this is uh, A in marketing, I can write. This is a namespace. Uh, this could be a B in sales. And uh, C maybe in, uh, in networks. D maybe in, in some in PC or E maybe in PC. So you can see that they have no structure. So A is completely different, B is completely different, C is completely different. So if you want to call, you you can simply call A, you can simply call B, simply call C, D, and E, so on, right? So they have no structure. So if you go ahead with this flat namespace, this is not going to work. This is not an efficient way to provide a domain name system. So it's not a good idea to have this namespace. So generally, people do not use it for uh, for an internet. Uh, so we have an another uh, you know aspect here we have something called as hierarchical namespace which is uh, contrast to this uh, flat namespace it is also having sequence of characters but the difference is they have structure okay so they have structure and this is the important part as you can see it is written that it is hierarchical so they have some hierarchy here uh, so let's understand what is the hierarchy you see i'll draw it down here uh, first one it will come as root servers or I can say that this is a root domain and after the root domain they have TLDs which is known as top level domain I hope that I'm not taking too much time as this topic is very large and I uh, I make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm making sure that I give everything here so this is a second level domain and the last one is basically called as third and fourth level domain. So I'm going to put here as a third as well as fourth level domain. So both are the same uh, space. So what happens in root level, root level domain? So root level domain generally represented with a dot sign. And I'll tell you about this dot sign here. And in the first level or the top level domain, it comes as a, com or maybe ftp or maybe w w i'm so sorry i think this is not wrong here actually this should be dot net and dot org and all that so here maybe org com or maybe edu com i'm so sorry right and so on you had seen these extensions in your uh, in your websites right the second level domain generally uh, works with uh, the, the the main organization name so uh, this could be a google.com Sorry, Google, uh, maybe Facebook, um, maybe uh, Reddit, likewise. Right? So these are the, the, the organization name here. Uh, and the third and fourth level domain. So third level, uh, you know, uh, it, it is something like, uh, um, so if I give like um, maybe a sales, let's say, or maybe marketing, right? So this is third level. It sometimes happens. It is not like, everywhere it is there and sometimes it happens that you have sales and marketing but apart from apart from there we have a fourth level and which specifically says a www or maybe ftp or maybe department or maybe anything like that okay so uh, this, this is the third and fourth so this is a kind of table that i can put it over here so this is so this is your uh, what do you call this is hierarchical namespace I hope uh, that you can understand uh, so uh, we generally read this namespace in a in a fourth to top level so I can read in this manner so I will read it like this 
and you you can understand right so i'm gonna read from bottom So when you read it, how you gonna do it? Read it's something like uh, you will read as www. Uh, maybe uh, it could be like uh, um, I can write like Facebook or Google.com like here because I do not want to put sales.google.com like guys. I do not want to do that. This is w. So maybe there is a chance that you are having a namespace like this. Uh, FTP. Dot sales. Dot example or maybe instead of example if i write a reddit that i should not read it but uh, for an example just like that so you can see here these are some of the example to read okay so you can read in this manner i hope you understand it now uh, uh, so uh, when i read uh, in this manner www.google.com we call this this reading as a fully qualified domain name Okay, so these are also known as, I remember this term you had heard so many times, I'm going to close it, uh, sorry for uh, FQ do, FQDN, uh, which is known as fully qualified domain name. So uh, this name you, you are seeing here is a fully qualified, fully qualified domain name. I may be wrong here by saying that these are fully qualified domain name. Because you see, there is one thing that I had not put it over here. And that thing is, if I go ahead and uh, if I read like this, www.google.com, uh, but what about this root domain? You see that root domain is always going to be there in your URL. It sits here, sits here, but it is abstracted from the user. Okay, it is, it is implicit. It is implicit there. Uh, it is not like we have to manually put the dot after dot com no we do not have to write it is always going to be there it is implicitly put by the uh, by these dns people they they already had appended that dot there root domain so you do not have to put there but actually it is there so when you see such kind of name www.google.com dot then it is known as fully qualified domain name i hope now you can understand so these are the things uh, so i am i do not know but please uh, you uh, just uh, what you can you slide up and down and just try to understand what i'm saying so in that way you can understand if you get any problem you can please write in the comment section i'll be able to help you one more thing that one more one more thing here is uh, this top level domain uh, we need to talk about this also uh, so it is not like that uh, it is just like dot com dot edu dot org uh, there is a possibility that it just narrow downs so it is narrow. It is narrowing down. Like uh, so if I have a TLD, then there are two things in TLDs. By the way, this is TLD, the top top level domain. So it bifurcated uh, in a way like a generic domain, and there is a country domain. So what do you mean by generic and country? Uh, whenever you see uh, like a, a dot a com. Uh, dot edu or maybe dot uh, govern likewise these are generic top level domains and uh, if in case if you had seen a country like uh, dot uk dot uh, au dot in then these are the country top level domain right so if a, if there is a website like uh, ignu dot ac dot in then you can see this is an india related uh, website and when i say Google uh, dot com, then I will say that this is a generic domain name. This is a country top level domain. This is a generic top level domain. So I hope till now you understand. This is the whole thing that we are, we understood and uh, from the uh, we call uh, domain name system. Uh, this diagram I'm gonna I'm gonna put it somewhere uh, in your in the notes and uh, I mean. I'm, I mean, still, if you get any problem, you can please contact me in the comment section. I would be happy to help you. Okay, so this is the things we had seen in the domain uh, name system. So in the next session, we're going to see that uh, how could we still further get into the deepened part of DNS and uh, understand the basics parts of it, right? So if you like this video, then I insist you to please uh, subscribe my channel, uh, hit that like button and share my video. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Uh, if I got any, if I get any 
uh, mistake here, then please correct me in the comment section. I'm ready for the hat, all right? Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you in the next session.